Welcome everyone, my name is Jessica and this is Simple, Cheap and Easy DIYs. I'm going to start off by taking these three wooden pumpkins and remove the glitter and the raffia bow off of all three. Next I'm going to take this scrapbooking paper that I got from Hobby Lobby and I'm just going to trace out the pumpkin shape, um, one pumpkin shape on each of the different scrapbooking papers. I have all three of the pumpkin shapes traced out. I'm just going to use my scissors and cut each of the shapes out from all three of the papers. All three of the pumpkin shapes cut out. Once I have those cut out, I'm just going to use my glue stick and I'm going to apply that glue stick all over the pumpkins, making sure that I apply it on the edges and all over the center. Once that's on, I'm just going to place one sheet of the paper on each of the pumpkins and smooth that out and let that dry. Next, I'm going to take the sandpaper and I'm just going to sand over all of the sides and edges. And this is actually going to help to trim up the paper and actually help the paper blend in and looks like look like it was made onto the pumpkin. And as you can see here, it does give a really nice finish. And this is what it will look like once you have it all completed. Next, I'm going to take this raffia and I'm going to make three little bows and I'm going to hot glue one bow to each of the top of the pumpkin stems. Here's what it will look like after you have the bow attached. Now to make the stand, I'm going to use this harvest blessing sign and I'm going to use the one that has the wood grain color on the side. Using my apple barrel paint and the color harvest orange, I'm going to paint just the top portion. Once the paint's dry, I'm going to use my hot glue and glue all three of the pumpkins onto the base. And I'm going to glue two in the front and one behind the front two. And you'll be able to see how I glue them on. And this is what it will look like once I have all three of my pumpkins glued on. Now you can remove the stickers on the back and use the back side to make it a two-in-one sign if you'd like as well. Now taking this metal harvest sign, I'm going to paint it in the harvest orange as well as two little pieces of craft sticks. And I'm going to glue the craft sticks onto the back of the harvest sign just to make it have a 3D effect when we attach it to the pumpkins. Now using my hot glue, I'm just going to glue onto the craft sticks and glue that directly onto the pumpkins. And this is what it will look like once it's attached. Here's the completed first project. I'm going to start by taking this rectangle canvas and removing the canvas from the wood base. Once the canvas is removed, I'm going to remove this center piece, leaving just the open rectangle. And then I'm going to take the apple barrel paint in the color Territorial Beige and paint the frame. Next, taking this metal thankful word, I'm going to paint it in the Harvest Orange. And I'm going to use a little piece of wooden dowel that I'm going to attach to the back of the word, as you can see I'm doing here. And this is what we're going to use to stand up the word. Next, I'm going to apply some hot glue to the bottom of the dowel and place that in the center of the frame. And I did use a different color originally, but I decided to change it to the orange um, after I had already completed it. 
but I did um, go ahead and glue a little bit of hot glue where the word uh, touches the wood just to hold it in place. And after I do that, I'm going to take this little owl and just apply a little bit of hot glue and then glue that to the top of the frame. And here's the completed second project. The third project, I'm going to use this uh, pumpkin cutout. Now, what I'm going to do to hold this in place is I'm going to use a little bit of the clear packing tape and I'm going to apply a strip in the middle and on both sides. That way it will hold it together for when we apply the paper. Next, taking this scrapbooking paper that I got at Hobby Lobby, I'm going to turn the pumpkin over and trace around it. Now, I'm not going to trace the whole pumpkin. I'm just going to trace from the uh, top, leave off the top portion and then the bottom portion is what I'm going to be tracing. As you can see, I've done here. Once I have that traced, I'm going to cut that out and I'm going to cut a little bit larger than what I need just to make sure that it fits. And I am going to use my glue stick and just apply glue all over, uh, making sure I cover all of the uh, sides and edges. Once I have that done, I'm just going to smooth the scrapbooking paper on and let that dry. This is what it'll look like once you have the paper in place. Once I do that, I'm going to actually remove the packing tape off of the back. And using my X-Acto knife, I'm going to cut uh, in between each of the little pieces of wood. And then I'm going to trim up around the sides and the bottom as well. And this is what it will look like once it's complete. Now you can leave it as is because I did leave the top with the word autumn. But I'm going to add this metal welcome word and that I've painted in harvest orange and I'm going to use the little craft sticks again that I've painted. Um, I'm actually going to be using three though. I'm going to space those out one in the middle on two on each of the ends of the word. Once I have those in place, that'll also help give the word a 3D effect. I'm just going to apply a little bit of hot glue to each of the sticks and then place that onto the sign. And here's your completed third project. Leave me a comment down below and let me know which of today's projects was your favorite. We'll start off by taking these tumbling tower blocks and I'm going to be using hot glue for video purposes but I do recommend a wood glue for a more permanent hold and to make sure that they lay flatter and straighter. Uh, but with these tumbling tower blocks I'm going to be making two rows of six blocks and two rows of seven blocks. Once I have all my rows made, I'm going to start attaching them to form a square. I'm going to use the seven blocks um, on one side and the six blocks on the other and just go ahead and assemble them um, as you can see me doing here. Once I have my frame fully assembled, I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint in a guave and I'm going to go ahead and paint the entire frame. While that's drying, I'm going to take this pumpkin patch uh, placemat and I'm just going to cut off the sides on both sides. And you can save these for uh, another project if you would like, but we're just going to be using the center picture for this project.
Now taking my frame and the placemat, I'm going to place that face down on the frame and I'm going to be using craft sticks to actually hold this in place. So I'm going to take my craft sticks and apply hot glue um, all over that and I'm just going to place them around the frame and the picture. That way I'm not gluing the picture directly onto the frame and it helps to hold a little bit better by using the craft sticks um, instead of just gluing the picture straight onto the frame. Once you have all the craft sticks in place, um, this is what it will look like. And then we can actually start working um, on placing the lights. So I'm gonna be using these LED fairy lights, which I got at Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna use these um, on the back of the frame. What I'll do first is in one of the corners, I will go ahead and glue the battery pack down, making sure that the switch is facing where we can turn it off and on. Once I have that glued, then I'm just going to take my lights and place them in the middle of the picture. Um, now you can try to place strategically place these, but I just kind of place them around the truck um, in no particular pattern. Here's what it looked like once I had all my lights glued down in place. Once that's done, I'm going to take a piece of foam board that is cut to the size of the frame and I'm just going to place that on the back and measure out where the battery pack sits. And once I have that measured out, then I will just cut that section out. That way the foam board fits right up against the frame. And once I have that battery pack portion cut out, I'm going to use some masking tape to uh, go around all the edges and that just kind of helps give the edge a finished look and it doesn't look so much like foam board once we get that painted. Once we have the masking tape all the way around the edges, I'm going to take that Aguave chalk paint and I'm just going to paint the edges of the foam board, but you can paint the back if you'd like as well. But this is what it will look like once it's painted. Once that's done, I'm going to place the foam board on the back of the frame just to make sure that everything aligns and then I'm going to apply hot glue to the frame and glue the foam board down.
Now on mine, I cut the foam board a little too small, so I'm just gonna use the uh, chalk paint and paint the portion of the craft sticks that show. That way it blends uh, right in with the remainder of the frame. Once that's done, I'm gonna take one tumbling tower block and I'm gonna paint them in the aguave paint as well. I'm gonna be uh, using a paint stick actually as the sand, um, and I did paint that in the aguave paint also. But once the paint is fully dry, I'm going to glue one of the blocks to the top of the frame, as you can see I've done here. Once I have that in place, I'm going to take the paint stick and I'm going to glue the paint stick at an angle onto the back of the tumbling tower block that we just glued down, um, as you can see I'm doing here. Once it's all glued in place, then you can use the paint stick as the sand to hold the frame up. Now I did also apply a little bit of hot glue to the bottom of the paint stick just to give it a little bit of grip when you set the frame up. And here's your completed pumpkin patch light up sign. Start off by taking two of these pumpkin uh, signs and removing the center part since we're just going to be using the outer part of the pumpkin and you can sand off the glitter if you would like to. Um, that is optional but once you have that done I'm going to take this baking sheet and I'm going to place the pumpkin frame um, over the top and then I'm just going to trace that out and I'm going to cut two of the pumpkin shapes out of the tin. Once I have those cut out, I'm going to spray paint them in the Rust-Oleum spray paint in the color white. And this is what it'll look like once you have the paint fully dry. I did also spray paint the pumpkin frames as well using the same white spray paint. Once that paint's fully dry, I'm going to use my hot glue and I'm going to hot glue all the way around the pumpkin frame and glue that onto the baking tray. And this is what it will look like once you have the baking sheet glued to the pumpkin. Now I'm going to take these LED fairy lights and I'm going to glue them onto one side of the pumpkin. And I'm just going to be using a little bit of hot glue. Now I actually changed the way this battery pack is glued down. That way it's easier to um, actually turn it off and on. But what I'm going to do is just glue the fairy lights around the pumpkin, um, the frame. I did also use a little bit of tape to help hold those in place as well. And a little bit later, I'll actually show you how I changed the positioning of the battery pack to make it easier to turn the lights on and off. And this is what it will look like once you have the lights in place. Next, I'm gonna take these word strips and I'm gonna spray paint them in the Rust-Oleum spray paint as well. I'm just gonna give them a light coat. And this is what they'll look like once they're dry. I did just paint one side. But once those are dry, I'm gonna apply hot glue around the rim of the pumpkin, as you can see here. And then I'm just gonna take those strips and wrap them all the way around the pumpkin from one side of the stem to the other side of the stem. And this is what it will look like once you have those all the way around. 
and then to connect the word strips together because they weren't quite long enough to do uh, one whole piece I'm actually going to use some tape on the inside and tape those together I did use masking tape but I think clear packing tape would actually work better and I'm just going to apply tape to both sides where they connect And now I realized I wouldn't be able to turn the lights off and on the way I had the battery pack in place. So I'm actually going to glue that just up and down and hide that behind the stem. That way you can easily turn it off and on. Now I did make one mistake when I was making this. Um, I actually placed the tin on the same direction which caused the stems not to line up. So I actually had to change that as you can see here and uh, flip it around. So whenever you do this, just make sure that you place one of the tins on the opposite side of the pumpkin, if that makes sense. That way the uh, part that I glued would actually have been on the inside. But I went ahead and, and used it to make it work. And I just apply hot glue to the other um, pumpkin side and then glue that to the strips as you can see me doing. the second side of the pumpkin glued down I went ahead and spray painted the back of the pumpkin that way it would go ahead and match but again you wouldn't have to do this step um, had I placed it on the right side but this is what it will look like once it's fully together and I did use a little bit of jute twine that I just tied around the top of the pumpkin stem I just wrapped that around a, a few times just to add a little bit of decoration Next, I'm going to take two of these uh, fall leaves, one in red and one in green, and I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue to glue them onto the top of the pumpkin stem. Now I'm going to take the burnt umber and just dry brush that over the pumpkin to give it a rustic feel. But if you don't like that, you can actually just skip this step and leave the pumpkin white. I think it really looks uh, nice, just the plain white gives it more of a high-end decor piece look. Um, but if you choose to, like I said, you can always do the um, dry brushing of the burnt umber to give it more of a rustic feel. I'm just going to apply the burnt umber to the top of the pumpkin stem just to kind of give that definition and make that look more like a stem. And this is what it will look like once you have it fully painted. start off by taking this pumpkin from Dollar Tree and removing the raffia bow as well as the hang. Now I am going to leave the leaf on and in place and I'm going to apply one coat of apple barrel paint in the color white 
Now you can use a scrapbooking paper, but I'm going to use this scarf from Dollar Tree and that's what I'm going to be using to cover the pumpkin. That way it's made all from Dollar Tree items, but like I said, you can use scrapbooking paper. And I'm just going to use Mod Podge to apply the scarf in place and just make sure that the lines are as straight as possible. I have the scarf in place I'm gonna apply Mod Podge to the top of the scarf to go ahead and seal that in and I'm just gonna apply that all over the top and let that dry once the Mod Podge is dry I'm gonna use my scissors and cut off the excess scarf from around the pumpkin Now the edges weren't sitting as flush as I would like against the pumpkin so I am going to use a little Mod Podge in some areas just to help flatten that out. Now taking my leaf I'm just going to wrap that around to the front and I'm going to use a sunflower to decorate the top and I'm just going to apply that using a little bit of hot glue. Now I'm just going to take the jute twine hanger and glue that back onto the pumpkin sign and that's what we'll use to hang it. Now this step is optional but I'm going to use these wood letters um, and spell out fall and paint them in this bright yellow. Once I have those painted I'm just going to glue them to the center of the pumpkin. And here's your completed first project. This next project, I'm gonna start out with this cylinder base and another one of the Buffalo Check scarves. And I'm just gonna apply a hot glue to the bottom of the scarf and wrap that all the way around the base. have the bottom all glued on, I'm going to apply hot glue up the back of the vase and finish attaching the scarf. Once I have the scarf all glued down, I'm going to take the excess that's left over on the top and just place that down inside the vase and make sure that the lines are straight. Once that's done, I'm going to take these LED fairy lights and I'm just going to place those down inside the vase as well. For the battery pack, I'm going to apply some hot glue to that and then glue that to the side of the vase. That way it's easy to turn it on and off. And next, I'm going to take two bunches of these sunflowers and just place those inside the vase. And here's your completed second project. the third project, I'm going to take two of these 5x7 frames and I'm going to remove the staples and remove the canvases off. Once I have those fully removed, then we can start assembling the uh, lantern. For this, what I'm going to do is just measure in the center and I'm going to measure off the width of the second frame as you can see here. And I'm going to repeat that step on both sides. Once I have that measured up on both sides, I'm just going to cut the section out. That way um, you'll have two pieces. Um, that way we can glue them to the whole frame. To glue these down, I'm just going to glue the two half pieces to the center of the whole frame, as you can see here. Once 
have the larger lantern completed, I'm going to repeat the same steps for the smaller lantern. Now on both the lanterns, I'm going to use the jet black and the white apple barrel paint and I'm going to paint half of it black and half of it white. Next using a piece of the scarf, I'm going to fold that over and glue that down to make the handle for both of the lanterns. Once we have that handle made, then we can glue that onto the lantern and what I'm going to do is just uh, turn that on the side and place that in the corner. And I did cut the scarfs at the corner into a V shape, that way it fits nicely onto both lanterns. Now you can decorate these however you'd like, but I'm just going to be using these fall pumpkins and sunflowers for the decoration, but you can always change it out to go with different seasons. And here's the completed third and fourth projects. this fifth project, I'm going to be using this metal basket and another one of the buffalo check scarves. And I'm just going to fold the scarf over itself, that way I don't have to cut it and it will actually help it stay in the um, basket a little bit better. But once I have that all folded, I'm just going to weave it in and out of the basket all the way around. Once I get to the meeting part of the two scarves, I'm just going to tuck that um, around itself. That way it'll actually hold it in place as you can see me doing here. Now I'm going to apply just a small amount of hot glue just to make sure that that does stay and hold in place. Once your basket's complete, you can fill it with any decorations that you would like for any season. But here is the fifth project completed with fall decor. Here's all today's completed fall buffalo check decor pieces. I'm going to start off by taking this brownie cake pan and using this apple red rust-oleum spray paint I'm going to spray paint the entire tin Next I'm going to take four of these magnetic tins which if you can't find these you can also use mason jar lids and I'm going to spray paint these in some black spray paint Once the spray paint is fully dry, I'm going to make the outer part of the tire and it's a little hard for me to explain, but you can see how I did mine um, here, but there are other ways that you can do it also, just whichever works for you, but you can kind of watch here and see how I make the inner part of the tire.
And this is what it'll look like once you have the tire complete and you'll repeat that for all four tires. Next, I'm gonna take this plastic serving spoon and I'm gonna spray paint it in the black spray paint. Next, I'm gonna take the tin and turn that over and this spoon actually fits perfect on the bottom. So it's a nice fit. Once I have that placed where I want it, I'm just gonna take hot glue and apply a generous amount of hot glue all over the bottom of the spoon. But I do recommend using an E6000 glue if you're wanting a more permanent hold. Once you have the spoon all glued in place for the handle, I'm gonna take each of the wheels and I'm gonna apply a generous amount of hot glue to the top of each of these. And because it is magnetic, it does actually help hold it in place as well. But I'm just gonna place that um, on each of the uh, ends of the wagon to make the wheels. And this is what it will look like once your wagon is complete and you can decorate it however you like using fall decor or you can change out the decor for each season. And here's the completed little red wagon using fall decor setup. Thank you so much for watching today's video i hope everyone enjoyed it if you did make sure you give this video a big thumbs up as always you can leave me a comment down below and if you're not already subscribed to my channel make sure you hit that subscribe button till next time hope everyone has a great day